الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله ولي الصالحين وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله صلوات الله والسلام عليه ما رسبت برادس استسن إسلام الله سبحانه وتعالى وإن سيزن على القرآن شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن in the month of Ramadan the month in which the Quran was revealed Hudan Linas as guidance for the whole of mankind وَبَيِّنَاتِ مِنَ الْهُدَى وَالْفُرْقَانِ ف and then the Quran is the what the only book of Allah subhanahu wa taala who has come or that has been sent unto Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in order to make light unto people for people to understand the universal religion which is Al Islam the religion of Allah subhanahu wa taala ever since the period Adam alaihi salam until the end of time. At the end of the verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي أَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيمٌ This ayah was revealed when someone went to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and asked the Messenger of Allah, How far the distance between us and Allah that I may shout for Allah to hear me or do I only have to call? Maybe he is somewhere. Then the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did he answer because he had no answer this, to this question and Allah sent Jibreel alayhi wa sallam with the answer to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam وَإِذَا سَعَلَكَ إِبَادِي If my servants, when they ask of me Allah فَإِنِّي قَرِيمٌ I am very close to them and I, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I answer whenever they call so they should call me Allah alone and know that from only Allah they can receive a reply so Allah has made us to understand فَإِنِّي قَرِيدِ He is very very close to us Allah is more closer to you than yourself so you don't have to ask anyone but ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone in the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he was giving us the benefits of Ramadan he said the first Ramadan is rahmah, mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the middle of Ramadan is istighfar Allah forgives saints and then the end of it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ends up a benefit for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to admit us in paradise. May Allah accept our dua. So now before the big beginning or before the beginning of Ramadan, we have to start getting ready. And how do we get ready? Getting ready by making what is known as istighfar. Seeking forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from all sins. Because sin is what is the obstacle between you and Allah. Sin is what is between you and Jannah, and sin is the way or is the means by which one can be sent to the hellfire. So, in order to have a good result with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have to try to wipe away the sin, the obstacle. You extract the obstacle from your way. And to do that, when Allah revealed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إِذَا جَاءَ نَصُورُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجَ فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَّابٌ Correct? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him to understand that when he sees victory in the final days and then he sees that so many people are accepting Islam all that he has to do is to praise and glorify the name of Allah seek forgiveness for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept repentance when everyone repents this is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the best of all people, the best of mankind, who Allah has made him sinless. He doesn't commit these big sins, except that he is a human being. And he may make mistakes, but even that, Allah says that you should ask him forgiveness and seek his forgiveness and also repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then what of us? Each and every day, in every minute, in every second, we commit, we commit and we commit. Then how much do we need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us our sins? And Allah is saying that He is ready to forgive you whenever you commit sin. You have to understand that. Please come forward. There is no space behind. You have to understand that sins are like sicknesses. They are like virus. Sickness. And the door of Tauba is open. So the door of Tawbah is known as medicine. So sickness is what we do, we commit sin. And Tawbah is what is known as medicine. So whenever you are sick, you seek medicine from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that medicine is to repent to Allah. The sickness is the sins that we do commit day and night. But the medicine is to seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness day and night. 
And Allah made us, we who say we are believers, that all you who believe, repent to Allah. Why? Because we are human. We may make mistakes day and night. When Allah, and the Prophet ﷺ made mention about someone who Allah should judge for only looking at what Allah has made forbidden once, that will send him to hell fire. One, it will destroy all the good deeds that you have done. So you have to know the quality of your good deeds and the quality of your bad deeds. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling us to seek his forgiveness. Then again, we have to understand that in Ramadan, it is a very big advantage, a privilege, not on any ummah, but the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You ask the Christians, how do you fast? Every Christian will give you a way of fasting. And finally, you realize that they are not fasting, they are dieting. By you, the Muslim, from the north to the south, and from the east to the west, you ask any Muslim, he gives you the same formality, the same format of fasting ever since the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, had begun the fasting himself. So you have to understand that it is the deen of Tawheed, deen of oneness, that Allah has guided this deen, because he called the deen his deen. So he said, in the deen in the lahi al-Islam. Most certainly the religion belonging to Allah is Al-Islam. And this is the religion of all prophets and messengers of Allah and the religion of all good people who have been chosen onto the right path may Allah guide us. So in this month, my respected brothers and sisters in Islam, you have to trade with Allah, do business with Allah. The business of the time is so much that we want glorify. The business of the time in order to seek forgiveness of Allah, in order to praise Allah, glorify Allah, and the most beneficial of all to say the words that are being said by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is the Al-Quran. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa says that every one letter that you read from the Quran Allah gives you ten rewards. And this is in the month beside Ramadan. By Ramadan itself, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you seventy times what he used to give you while in the month beside Ramadan. So you see it's a very big, big advantage. And no one knows whether any Ramadan will meet him again. All you have to understand is that this Ramadan shall never return to you. <coughs> so if you try to benefit in this Ramadan, then you have actually succeeded. But if you don't, then it will not benefit you, for it shall never return to you. If you leave till next Ramadan, this Ramadan is already gone. It shall never come back. If you don't leave until next Ramadan, then this Ramadan is your last Ramadan. Then what do you have to do? You have to make sure that you purify it. Purification of the Ramadan is to make sure that you respond to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in accordance with the commands of Allah and the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then again, apart from reading the Quran, you can make dhikr. If you cannot read Quran, listen to the Quran. They are the words of Allah. If you cannot read much of the Quran, read Kulu Allah that you know, read. Kulu Allah's Brahim Nas, Brahim Fala, any surah that you know, read. Repeat it. Be making the stifar, as the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to do. Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayhi. I seek forgiveness of Allah and repent. So he used to repent and seek forgiveness every time and every day. You have so much time to do that. If you're sitting down without doing anything you can do, even while at work, while at school, whatever you are doing, these are words that are very light on the, on the time. As said by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there are two words that are very light on the time. You can, you can say it, everyone can say it. They are very heavy in the scale and they are more loving to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallahi wa bihamdihi, subhanallahi azim. These words, how many times do we say them? Abu Bakr, get this. Yeah, tell me. So you have to understand that. The video. The video. You have to understand that one has to respect. The words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they are the words of Allah that has come into the into the what? Into the book. So the book is the book of Allah, but the words are the words of Allah. They are not the words of man. And they are always being recorded. That is why they have been made as a book. A book for you that you can read until the day of judgment. Then again, finally, my respected brothers and sisters in Islam, as I mentioned, that in this mas masjid, we make iftar, we have iftar every day. Every day. And everyone, anyone who comes around has seen or has already knowledge of that. So anyone who wants to contribute can do that. It's for his own good. According to your intention, whatever you want, how many people you want to feed, whatever man you want to feed, you guess what? Bring as much money as you want. If we say bring rice, now we will have about a thousand rice over there and we will not have tomato. The next Juma I say tomatoes, then they bring hundred what of tomatoes and there is no salt. 
before we ask us to hold Ramadan is over. So we bring money. For instance, yesterday I was there, I received a message from Maharaja. They say, today don't cook. We will bring iftar for you. My respected brothers, this is what we call khayr. We call good. There are so many people they are doing. They do. Alhamdulillah, even the brothers from all the name once we were there, they say, okay, today we are going to make Ramadan. We are going to make iftar. Alhamdulillah, they brought food. So many people, everyone tried to do because it is what? It's like a challenge. Everyone wants to get this benefit. This used to be the character of the Sahaba or the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They always raised in doing good. They want always to beat one another in doing good. The two grandchildren of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When one you come to him for sadaqah, he asks you to go for his brother also for sadaqah. So that the brother also can get the rewards. Sometimes the brother see that he, this, his brother is giving sadaqah, he also cross the, the, what? the poor man and give him sadaqah. And say, how much did my brother give you? If you realize that the brother gave him more than he has given, he said, MashaAllah, my brother is more better than me. Abu Bakr Siddiq, when he accepted Islam, he came and said, Messenger of Allah, this is my money. What money? The money that I have all in this world. What do you want to do with it? The money also has accepted Islam. Take it for Islam. He gave everything that he had. Omar al Khattar radiallahu anhu also came. Messenger of Allah, this is my money. What money? Half of my money, the whole of half of my rich. Oh, half of my wealth, I'm giving it for Islam. He said, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made dua for him. He said, but what did my brother do? Abu Bakr. He said, Abu Bakr gave everything. He said, Subhanallah, I can never be this man. They were challenging. They realized that money is nothing. Allah revealed, You can never be a good person unless you give from what you love. They say, Ibn Mas'ud, when he heard about this ayah, he had a very good guy, a, a nice garden, and that garden would talk of food that belonged to him, that he benefited a lot from, that he loved this garden so much, he just went on and gave it, gave it out for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People are doing, and still people are doing. And we still have examples of these people today that can do. So my respected brothers, as this in Islam, let's do for the sake of Allah. Let's not allow the masjid to cry. For sure, if Ramadan comes, the masjid has to smile. But if you see the masjid crying, you have to understand that definitely we are short of our iman. Let's try to hold up. Let's try to hold the mosque. Alhamdulillah, that every time we try, any time that we announce, Alhamdulillah, we have good people who will give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the masjid is still in need. We should give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The zakah fitr of this man, of this uh, Ramadan, is still the same like last year, seven euros. Anybody who wants to put the zakat of fitr, you can put it in the black box, before, uh, in the green box, before he goes. Or he can, anytime we have a lot of day, we'll have a lot of this, right? Today we want salaka, we want salaka. Anything you give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in order that we can pay all the differences that we had in this mosque, we always, always need. And you have to understand that just about in a week again, we start asking for next month. So it is too much. We know it's too much for you. You always hear this. It's, you get tired, but there's nothing we can do. Allah say that announce. Seek from them. Maybe if all don't give, maybe there's only one person who can give for the sake of Allah and that will represent all. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the reward to follow each and every one of us. And my respected brothers and sisters in Islam, if we look at what is happening to our brothers in Gaza, in so many places, it's very sad. It's very sad. We are an ummah. It's just like we are a body without a head. If you have the body without head, headless body, what can you do? Nothing. We have the whole ummah, there is no head. Omar ibn Attar is dead. This is what we have to understand. That is the only problem we have is this in this ummah. If Omar was alive today, this will not happen. May Allah be pleased with him. This is what we have to understand. That is the only weakness that we have in this ummah. When our brothers and sisters are dying, we're seeking money, we're seeking food, we're seeking everything that we can do in order to help them because we are weak but we love them because we don't have hair. The head is gone. Either the head is gone or the head is lifeless. Meaning that we don't have a leader. Why? How can we have a leader when our, our people who are in Syria are killing their own them, them own selves? Who are supposed to lead our people, they are killing our people. How can we have a leader when the Muslim is killing another Muslim? Someone told me that in Libya, that we have people who are calling themselves that they are militants. So they kill anyone who had been in the, in any, in any way he's a Muslim. And before killing, you know what they do? They kill the person before, before the Salah. 
And the one who will slaughter the Muslim is the one who will lead the prayer of that time. A Libyan told me this. A Muslim kill a Muslim in the way of killing a lamb and he leads the prayer because he is what? Bottle. He is a brave person. So if we have the Ummah in this way, then how can we have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helping us? When Allah said to the people of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when the messenger, messenger of Allah was speaking, seeking witness, he sees that the kuffar are killing the Muslims. He said, Abu Bakr, I would like to take a nap. Then Abu Bakr said, you never sleep unless there is a reason. And when he woke up, he said, Abu Bakr, Allah, I have seen 3,000 Malaika, they are fighting for you. So the kuffar who later on accepted Islam, he said, we see swords and spears and arrows coming from those directions. We don't know who is throwing them. Allah said, He said, I'm not only sending the Malaika, I, Allah, am with you. These were people who actually worship Allah to the way that if they say Allah Akbar, everything is gone. But today, we have become a doormat. They step on us whenever they want. They treat us any way that they want. Brothers and sisters in Islam. The less we can do is to pray for our brother in, our brothers and sisters in Gaza. May Allah be with them. May Allah reward them for everything that they lose. May Allah leave them over their enemies. May Allah make them one day to smile like we do smile. May Allah bless them in this Ramadan. All those who die, may Allah accept them as shuhada. May Allah put them in Jannah with Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And those who are remaining, may Allah strengthen them. And those who are helping them, may Allah accept their help for them. And we also who are outside, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen our iman. And may Allah make this Ramadan a time that Islam will be very, very much lifted for the whole Ummah. وَأَخِيرًا يَا إِخْوَةَ الْإِسْلَامِ فِي مَا قُلْنَا لَكُمْ مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يُخْرِلُ اللَّهَ قَدْرًا حَسَنًا